All right. Um, yeah. All right. Cool. So, hey, everybody. We're. Um, I'm. First of all, I'm sorry. I'm a little bit late. I. Uh, I spaced a little bit on this today. It's. It's been, as you can imagine, it's been a. Uh, bit of a busy week. You know, this is. Um, I'm actually down in California right now. You might notice the my background's a little different. I'm at the. I'm at Facebook HQ in Menlo Park. And uh, because I'm here for for the Game Developers Conference this week, which, <clears throat> as I've mentioned a couple of times, I'll be speaking at. So yeah, so I'm here. I'm gonna, and I've been working on uh, finishing up my slides, finishing up my presentation. And so, of course, like I said, I uh, the, the time kind of got away from me. I, it's funny because I was thinking about it today. I was like, oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna do that. I you know just because I'm traveling, and I, I had actually. Um, I actually got a had gotten an early flight, very early flight. So so it was even in my head like, yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be in town in time to actually be able to do this presentation or not to see him. I'm all closer, not this presentation, do this uh, this this live Q and A. And um and then it came noon and but anyway, no that matters. We're here now. And um so what I kinda wanna talk about today then is uh, you know, I I'd mentioned I was gonna talk about um I was gonna try and talk a little bit about <clears throat> um uh, we were, you know, we were talking about goal setting. We were talking about uh, kind of steps to success. And uh, instead, I think what I'm going to do today is talk a little bit about just kind of spin off of my GDC talk and talk a little bit about how to make movement part of your day. How to make movement, you know, whether it's movement snacks, whether it's just a little self check, whether it's part of your workout. And if anybody pops on and has questions about that, go ahead and hit me up. Like I said, I'm gonna, probably gonna gonna cut this a little short. Um, it's you know I started a little late, but I'm gonna try and get back to get back to work here in short order. So we've got about 20 minutes, and um, so I'll just start by talking a little bit about what I'm gonna be talking about. And uh, I gotta say, um, you know, I, I'm I'm actually really really happy and kind of kind of surprised that the um, that the GEC conference organizers accepted this talk because originally when I when I had uh, thought about pitching it, it, it was kind of a joke. You know, I had you know I mean, I've been as far as I'm concerned, I've been out of the game industry for almost six years now, and you know as much as I love GEC, as much as I love making games, as much as I love a lot of the people that I've met, I, I hadn't had really had any plan to really stay connected other than other than kind of keeping up with the technology trends. Because obviously the work I'm doing now in VR and AR is <clears throat> is, uh, is 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 very intimately connected to that from a technology standpoint, and so jokingly I had I had thought well you know given what um, you know given the working conditions and I and don't read too much into that other than the fact that you know sometimes in tech and in games especially we work long hours and we're it's getting better now but but we're not often in the most uh, we're not in environments that are conducive to to a to a positive health model. You know, I mean, we <clears throat> we sit at desks with you know these things blasting blue light at us, and and you know, kind of hunched over. And I mean, I, there have definitely been days, even me personally, where I know I'm like this close to the monitor. That's so uncomfortable, isn't it? You know, because you're tired. You know, you're not you haven't eaten well because you've been on the job forever. And you know, I was thinking back to kind of how my quality of life has improved over the last three years, just adding mobility training. And so, like I said, kind of, kind of just as a joke, I, you know, I put it out on Facebook, I put it out on, on, on Twitter, like, Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna submit a talk about, about movement and mobility for GDC. And enough people came back with, yeah, you should do it. That's a great idea that I was like, well, why not? I mean, you know, GDC has a quality of life track. And so, you know, I think obviously this is a huge quality of life issue because you know I I've seen so many people get injured and, and get sick and you know get out of shape and you know me me included me being one of them you know I've definitely been through crunches game industry crunches and and tech work crunches where you know you're just working crazy hours and you're not moving you're not eating well you're not sleeping and you know you do it's like anything you do that long enough and and you're gonna you're gonna incur some effects whether it's you know whether you whether it's putting on some pounds or whether it's getting injured or whether you know i mean anything you can imagine that just comes from being static and poorly nourished and so 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 i submitted the talk and you know sure enough like it, it was funny it was kind of a <clears throat> I, I got um 
I got my acceptance, I think, at the absolute like latest that they, they were accepting talks. So I don't know if it was kind of a, uh, well, we need one more talk. So, and this guy has spoken before, so we'll let him do it. Or if it was, or if it was one of those, like, a lot of people were like, yeah, I don't know. This, this seems interesting. Or I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe I'll, uh, I have a couple friends on the advisory board. So maybe, maybe I'll, I'll ask them about it. But, um, but yeah, so here we are. And uh, actually, uh, as a, uh, I will, I'm actually going to make the slides from the presentation available to, uh, on, on my coach Seth Gibson page, so on this page, so um, try and clean them up a little bit and put some notes on so you guys see what we're talking about. But you know, for any of you guys who are in any sort of working environment that it, like I said, is not immediately conducive to a positive health model, and and that you know that doesn't mean just sitting either. I mean, it, it can be you know think think about folks who are in sort of construction or, you know, I think uh, one of my, one of my, uh, my cousin, like my cousin's husband, for example, works for, um, works for UPS. So, you know, he, it's, uh, he, it's a bit, actually somewhat of a highly movement, high, high movement capacity and variability required, right? Because you go from, from loading and having to, having to load and unload to sitting and driving and then having to load and unload again, right? So even though there's a physical component to it, it it's not necessarily, you know, I think people, we have this, um, we have this conception that, oh, well, if I'm in, you know, if, if I'm in a physical discipline, like if I'm in construction or if I'm in, like I said, or, or if I'm doing something that requires movement, like say maybe I'm a postman or maybe I'm a, I'm a delivery guy, you know, it, it's fine. I'm getting my work out on the job. It's like, well, you know, you are getting, of course, some level of physical activity, but we do have to think about the structure of that activity and we do have to think about what benefits you may or not be getting because of how it's set up. You know, I mean, like I said, going from being seated to all of a sudden have to pick up a you know, bunch of heavy packages is probably not, not, a, not, not really a pop. I mean, that, that's, that's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like, uh, well, it's funny because that actually parallels what a lot of folks I think do now is, you know, they, they sit at a desk for, you know, eight to 10 hours and then they'll go do their their hour, maybe a couple times a week of, of work on. There's really no, <clears throat> there's no transition. You know, there's just it's just I go from one end of the spectrum to the other other end of the spectrum, and we think that's good for us because we're exercising. But I mean, it's I mean, obviously it's not right, and that's that's how you know. I mean, you, you you've heard you know, if if you follow movement at all, you've heard this idea that you know your one hour of of training doesn't doesn't really make up for the 23 hours of other stuff you might be doing to offset that. So it's the same idea. So, so, so we have to think about ways that we can kind of keep making, you know, basically stay prime. You know, I mean, it's not just about getting your one hour of, of high intensity work in, of, you know, of, of, you know, exercise in, um, like, 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 like we like to say a lot, you know, exercise is kind of a, sort of a man-made creation to address the fact that our lifestyle has, has moved away from, and, and I don't want to go too far down the, the ancestral health kind of uh, rewilding. I mean, and you guys know, I used to be a huge fan of that stuff and I, I still think it's interesting, but anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. That's a whole other conversation. Anybody wants to kind of hear about my, um, my thoughts on, on natural movement, ancestral health and all that, at least how they've kind of developed over the last, um, uh, over the last, I don't know. Let's let's say year. I'm happy to talk about that. Leave me a comment. But anyway, like I was saying, exercise is very much a man-made creation designed to address the fact that we we're not living in environments that that promote thing, the things that we need to kind of keep our brain making happy chemicals and to make you know to keep our, our body optimal. You know, optimal. You know, in a uh, but let's just say a healthy homeostatic state, right? So. But the problem is, as we, um, as we, as we, it seems like we're moving further and further away from that. And you know, I, I like a lot of what CrossFit did. What I, what I don't like though is that it, it did kind of drive, you know, it did kind of pound in this idea that you know, like, no, no, just work out really, really hard for a short amount of time and you're fine. Whereas <clears throat> the more we kind of look and study and kind of learn about how, how different, not just, not exercise, but just movement in general affects the body. You know, we're starting to, we're starting to see that maybe that's not the best idea. Maybe the best idea is to 
just make a movement part, just something you do, make it part of your day, whether that's going for a walk, whether that's, you know, whether that's, that's leaving your desk for a couple minutes and, you know, doing some joint circles, um, just, you know, you know, anything like that, anything that, that kind of, kind of keeps it, you know, keep, keeps it in your system, you know, like, like, like you've, you know, where we say all the time, you, you know, use it or lose it and movement variability and movement capacity is, is definitely one of those things. And you're not going to get that by just going from your eight hours seated to to your hour of whatever. And you know, and one of the other one of the other things that I think is really interesting too that we started to see kind of come around in. I know it's been recent for me that I started reading this research, but this idea that just you know you're just going from sitting to standing isn't necessarily the the, the silver bullet that, that it might have been made out to be earlier, you know, I mean, that's the thing, right? We're always looking for a quick fix, silver bullet kind of thing. And so everybody was very quick to, I know, you know, I mean, you, you, we've all seen it. sitting is the new smoking, sitting is lethal. And so of course, what's the, <clears throat> what's the natural conclusion? Oh, well, let's just stand up. But for, if you, you know, if you think, if we think about that for a variety of reasons, moving from sitting to standing isn't necessarily the same as moving. It's just, now you're in a different you're in a different static position that on the one hand does have some benefits but on the other hand can set you up for other adaptations for example um you know what if you know think think about the person who might be kind of standing but sort of leaning against their desk right and isn't in some degree of I'm going to use the term anterior pelvic tilt, but basically it means, you know, as, as they're standing at their desk, they're kind of, they're sort of leaning and, you know, their hips are kind of tilted forward. So they're putting their, their hamstrings in a, in a stretched position. I mean, it, it obviously it's not like, like, like an active, like, like stretch, stretch, but it, but it, but it's, it's, there's some stretch there, right? Because, and so over time, the standing position, you know, kind of, uh, kind of manifest the, the result of that manifests as tight hamstrings, and this is, this is obviously very very like kind of quick and dirty ex explanation. So, so this person has tight hamstrings now, and then they think that oh well my hamstrings are tight, so I need to stretch them. Well, no, you you actually need the opposite. You know, you need to you need to maybe retrain your hamstrings to be active in a shortened position because because you know, you, you've you've had them locked into this this stretch position for because you you, you know you went from sitting to standing so again you know you went from that one extreme to another extreme where really what we need to do is a little bit of both and um and it's interesting because at least in the tech industry these there, there have kind of been these these seeds you know one, one of the things that i'm, I'm going to talk about at gdc is some of the, the fitness industry trends that i've seen go through games and tech i mean you know for example uh 2007 was it 2009 2009 i was working at uh, 343 at microsoft studio working on halo and everybody every, everybody did um everybody did did p90x you know that, that was the thing uh, and and even and even a couple of years earlier, you know, when I was at uh, when I was at Bungie, you know, every, everybody was doing MMA partially because you know where we were in Kirkland was near um, AMC Pancration, which you know if you're a UFC fan, that's where uh, that's where uh, you know DJ Mighty Mouse trains. If you're a if you're a fitness fan, that's where Joel Jameson coaches out of. So, uh, and even before that, you know, it was uh, you know it was. There's some some semblance of powerlifting. I saw a lot of kettlebells, but it, but it was always in waves and in groups. And I think now, you know, I mean, in the last last little bit, I've seen OCRs and of course CrossFit, and you know, Orange Theory is another thing that I've seen a lot of folks kind of get into. And so my my point point being, all these things are have have a high movement variability and movement capacity requirement. So I think it's interesting, and I don't know if this is just because people in tech are kind of looking for something that's different. You know, they're like, oh, I just want to do something fun. You know, I want to do something that just gets me away. I don't want to go lift. I mean, although there are a bunch of, I do know a bunch of lifters in tech, so I don't want to, I don't want to say that's a thing, but, um, sorry, what was I saying? But yeah, but like I said, it's interesting to me how, how, how the trends have, that, that have kind of sort of been in the industry have been these high movement variability requirements. And even, I mean, even if you think about a conference like GDC, or if you've been to any conference, it's the same thing, right? It's, you know, you go from sitting at a talk for an hour to walking around the, the convention center, you know, maybe you, you sit in another talk, maybe you talk to a friend, maybe you 
go out afterwards with people and so you're like i mean i know i know a lot of folks i know a lot of you at gdc you're going to be walking around the city at lunch and walking around the city especially wednesday and thursday night you know kind of chasing the parties and <clears throat> so i think i think we're very primed in the tech industry for this sort of thing and it's interesting because even at facebook there was a um, there was a conversation on and i hope hopefully i don't get fired for saying this but there's there a conversation about uh the, the fitness center has actually started doing kind of kind of talking to folks more about movement in fact they even posted something by great cook on one of the internal groups i thought was really cool and uh so you know, of course i mentioned something about the fms and it sounds like they're going to start using the fms at facebook which is kind of neat um sadly i got shut down when i when i when i when i proposed to uh, creating some kind of a, a physical fitness club or whatever so for like specialty training opportunities but whatever that's 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 whatever um i'm a little bitter about it i won't lie but um <clears throat> but but yeah i think uh i think at larger companies like this the, the, the and, and, and anyone you know i think i think i think you're going to see this from a lot of just larger companies in general that have that are investing a bunch of money in uh, healthcare plan for their employees. I think they're going to start kind of. They're going to start looking at at more and more of this research and, and looking more and more at uh, at, a, at what we call a health model of of pain free. You know, which 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 includes pain free movement rather. And you know, there's some fascinating figures on how much money people spend on just medication. And so I think i think you're going to start seeing a switch away from that and i'm not saying that i'm spearheading this movement or anything um i don't know I, i'll just be happy if my talk goes over well um but you know he, but, but this but this is you know when i think about it this is actually a population that i you know i really want to try and have some impact on i mean i'm actually really excited that i get to go you know to a bunch of my you know my old peers in, in the game industry and talk about a, a little, actually, a very low threshold thing they can do that I think is going to really, really improve people's lives. Um, so, so, so we'll see. Um, you know, and, and like I said, this is for anybody. And I, I actually haven't spoken too much about the specifics in in the almost twenty minutes I've been on, and I apologize for that. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, if you know. If uh, if anybody's wondering about kind of I guess specifically what we're going to be talking about, we are going to you know we're going to start with you know I'm, I'm definitely going to tell tell a tale of numbers, a tale of the tape, if you will, um, because I do want people to sort of understand that it's not just me coming in saying hey do this thing and it's completely unsubstantiated, but it might make you feel a little better. It's like no no there are you know like I said there 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 are big numbers that that we kind of want to start to wind backward that we can do with movement. Uh, for example, two of the numbers that really hit me hard were that 51% uh, of, of, of a population surveyed for uh, a specific chronic, chronic pain survey said that they felt like they had no control over their incidence of pain. And a corollary survey to that uh, six I think it was six out of ten of the people in that survey said that they had a what they term a breakthrough pain occurrence every day to the point that it was severely impacting their quality of life and if we look you know and we can extrapolate those numbers to things like lost productivity uh, I, I think it was something like of those of, you know again of that population, 20% of that population reported that, that you know that those breakthrough pain incidents they felt was affecting their productivity at work, and then you know n sub percentages of that also re reported that they had that they had, you know taken time off or sick leave because of it. With some of the with I think the, the one of the most egregious numbers I saw was something like nine or ten percent of, of a population had actually switched jobs because they felt that the working conditions and probably rightly so were directly the cause of their pain and they said you know what the only way i can fix this is to go somewhere else and that to me is not acceptable um i i really think that you know i think if, if you're gonna put that much money at the kind of money that companies put into corporate you know healthcare, which i think is in the num which is on the order of the hundred billions which if you think about it 
you think about how big some of these companies are, that's, that's probably not a surprising number. So, but the fact that of that, most of that goes towards things like surgery and, you know, drugs and other things and not movement, you know, like, like, you know, movement based solutions, not exercise, not physical therapy, when that's probably the thing that could, that could be very helpful is, is, is kind of sad. And, you know, and, and that's kind of why I want to give this talk. So I want, I, ho I hope that people, I mean, the big, the big point, of, you know, the big closing point of this talk is, is going to be, you know, take ownership of, of what you can, you know, I'm, the point of my talk is to empower people to be able to kind of control their own sort of movement practice. And, you know, for, for people who are in minor pain or who aren't in pain right now, or who are, you know, who are just trying to kind of get better, you know, this is a great stepping stone. So anyway, um, I think that's good for today. Hey, thanks, Andrea. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually in, hey, Andrea, I'm actually in your kind of neck of the woods. I was actually going to try and uh, make it to, uh, what was it, Rich and, Rich and uh, Aaron's seminar yesterday, but I didn't fly until today. But, um, but yeah, I'm glad, glad you dug it. And like I said, I'll have the slides up uh, after the talk, and, and I'm going to try, I'm going to try and record the talk too. So, but um, anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna get back, speaking of my talk and my slides, I'm gonna get back to that. So thank you all and cheers everybody.